Hello there, James Miller for VFX Nomad, and today I'm going to do a spotlight on the shading layers in Clarice. So what I've done is I've repurposed the material linker project that we had before. Um, now, for those of you that don't know what a shading layer is, it's an alternative way of assigning materials, hence why I'm recycling the project. Now, what we have is three bowls, and we have uh, three materials, red, green, and blue. Now, if just to recap really quick, what we can do is drag these onto here and they will assign or we can select them and then go to the material linker and uh, assign a material that way. Now, what we're going to do is this alternative way. And the reason you might want to do this is because if you're working with a group of people, it's much easier to keep track of what's going on. Um, if you're going to repurpose assets or pass them to your friends or co-workers, um, this is also the way that you can kind of make sure that the assignments stick. Um, Otherwise, what happens is every time you're going to move it from project to project, you're going to have to manually drag and drop all the assignments all over again, unless you bring the geometry with you. Uh, every anyway, it's more it's more robust. Let's just leave it at that. So, this would be my recommended way of working. But of course, uh, let's just take a look at it because this is just me talking. Um, so at this point, we're going to go here and we're going to create a shading layer. All right. So new shading layer, and we're going to drop it down here at the bottom. And to look at this properly, uh, we're going to need two windows. We are going to look at the attribute editor over here. We're just going to pause that for a second. Uh, and what we do really want is the shading layer editor down here. Now, if you don't already have it, click on the arrow and go to shading layer editor. And this is what you'll get. Now, at this point, it doesn't really look like much. Um, we need to create a rule. Now, here you have three balls, so we want three rules to three. There we go. Now, to begin, I'm just going to make a super general rule. All right. The super general rule is a star. Now, a star means everything. All right. So you don't really want to do this with a shading layer, but I'm going to do it just for a second so that I get uh, so that I can just kind of show you what it does. Um, a star just means everything. So now everything in the scene is going to get um, whatever material I put here. So let's fill in the next box. The next box is what material do you want? So I'm going to say red, please. All right. So now we have, sorry, there's this bug that has appeared. Hopefully it's not happening in yours, but every time I drag a material in here, it seems to like populate the filter with material linker. Uh, it's kind of driving me nuts, but we will battle through. All right. So everything, um, gets red, right? Uh, so as you can see, that is not red. That is gray. It's the same. Um, so how do we look at it? We can preview it in this 3D view by dragging the shading layer over to this icon here and making sure we're in previs mode or progressive mode if we have some lights. And voila, everything is red. Um, now, what happens if I want that one to be red? And I want that one to be blue, right? So, so this is where having a super general rule is not helpful, right? So immediately we've, we've kind of like put ourselves in a corner. So the first thing that we need to do is, uh, not be so generic with what we're doing now. Don't run away from the syntax here. It, it kind of will make sense very quickly, I think. So even if you don't know coding, you want to do dot forward slash. So that means from this folder and onwards, right? And we can do dot forward slash star. So that in essence is saying from where this shading layer lives. So where, from where this is now go into all the folders underneath it and apply red. Okay. So our rules a little bit better. Um, but what we're looking for is this one specifically, right? So we know that this one's called sphere or actually let's just, let's take sphere two. So this one over here, so it's got a unique name so we can use that, right? So we're going to go over here and we're going to say, we're going to create a second rule. And I'm going to say from this folder and underneath anything that's called sphere two. So what I need to do here is make sure that there's a star at the beginning and the end of sphere two, because then it's going to look in all folders and anything before or after. It's just looking for the name sphere two in this folder and below. And we're going to say anything in there, I want them to be blue. Okay. Apply. Now 
as you can see, nothing has changed. Now, the reason nothing's changed is because these rules work top down, right? So the top rule that I've got is everything should have red. And then the second rule that I've got is sphere two should be blue. So the top rule is winning. Now, if I just swap them around, it reads this one first and it says sphere two should be blue. And then it says everything else should be red. So now the rules are working for us. So that's cool. Um, and just so we've done it again, we're going to go over to here. This should be sphere one. We could even just copy this uh, thing and we'll drop it down here and we'll say sphere one, right? Um, and red, green. There we go. Now we have the same problem again, right? Because we, we've got this really general rule above the more specific one. So I'm just going to move that up there. Now, because these two are unique, it doesn't matter what order they're in. So we're good. We're winning. Um, right. So that's fine. Now, if we look at the image view, uh, none of that is rendering, right? It's not, it's not doing anything. Um, and that is because we've simply just said in this preview section, you know, we're using previs and we've said previs, look at the shading layer. So what we need to do is basically tell the image. Uh, so this layer of the image to use this shading layer. And we do that if you've just loaded up the image, if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you will see shading layer here under the shading tab. And we can plug that in. Okay, so we plug it in. Then we come over here and we take a look and we now have our color-coded um, balls, right? So the shading layer is working. So at this point, if you wanted to pass this to somebody else, you could just press copy and paste it into an email. You could paste it how, however you like. And when someone picks this up, they'll know that this geometry will get its right assignments if they plug in this shading layer. So let's, so let's actually give this a name. So we'll call this spheres um, shading layer, right? So that's cool. Now let's, let's make another problem for ourselves. So we're going to grab this spheres and we're going to duplicate it. Right. So with these spheres, I'm just going to move the objects over a little bit. So there we go. <clears throat> now we have a problem that this first set of spheres have shading and the second set of spheres do not. So we have a shading layer. We know it works, but uh, there's only one slot here. Right. So how are we going to plug this in? All right. So we have the choice of one or the other at this point. Um, and so that's a problem. Um, now, the shading layers do this nifty, like, second thing, okay? Uh, remember at the beginning I said we're going to ignore the attribute editor. So what we need to do at this point is we need a way of nesting these things together. We need a way of um, plugging them all in. So we're going to create this thing called the master shading layer, if I could spell. All right. So the master shading layer is what we want. We're not going to enter anything here, but we are going to look up here. And as you can see, it says children shading layers. So that kind of does what you think it might do, where you just add all the shading layers together that you're interested in, right? So that's a terrible name. Uh, let me just call it spheres one so that we know it's not the same thing. Um, right, so just to recap what I've done, I have created a new shading layer. I've done nothing to it, except up here in the attributes, so I've ignored this whole window. Up here in the attributes, I've added the other two shading layers to it. Okay, so I created a new shading layer and I've nested two shading layers underneath it. Uh, the reason for that is now when we work in our project, sorry, um, you can just plug in this master one time and I can do the same thing in the 3D view. I can just plug in the master one. And now anytime I make new shading layers, I can just add it to that master one, right? So the master one, you don't really want to put any assignments on it itself. You're just going to nest um, objects to it. So here I have all these different assets. Imagine that's like a character, that's a building, that's a car, there's all these other things. I know this uh, is all going to wire up correctly the way the person who spent ages making sure all the different materials were on the right pieces with the right materials, uh, right textures intended. Right. So I know it's a bit weird but I would encourage you to kind of uh, run with it for a while. And so just to show that these two are different, we're going to take one second and we're just going to flip these around. Um, 
be careful because if we go back up here and we move this one to the top, this whole second row is turning red. Uh, it's not doing the whole scene because we are using this dot forward slash star. Um, what I was going to say to be careful of is if that first object is called sphere, right? But if I do that, because um, they're all called sphere, right? Because we have the star at the end, it's ignore. It's saying, oh, having a one at the end or having a two at the end is okay. So in this case, you'd want to remove that from the end, right? Don't worry if you didn't really get that last bit. That is also fine. Um, I was just, if it makes sense to you, cool. If it doesn't, come back and watch this video another day um, once you've had a chance to play with it. So I'm just going to move these around just because uh, I want it to be different. Okay. So uh, that's kind of it. Um, what you can do is also add displacement to things via the shading layer. So here I'm going to add this nasty displacement that we made before. Uh, there you go. So it's, it is displacing and it's using the shading layer to do so. So let's displace this whole second row and we'll go, yeah, oops, sorry. And I, we're going to do that. And then in the first one, we're going to, let's suppose we want to put a clip map on here. Okay. So clip map, um, you know, just cuts, cuts things, turns them on or off. So we've got that. And now we have all these unique assignments and we're good to go. So just to recap, with the shading layer, you have a list of objects that you can add to it. So here we have three objects. And then what we're gonna, what I would advise you do is you have your objects. So let's say this is called car. And then this would be called the card shading layer. You have your bits of geo and you wanna aim at them. And then here you're gonna assign your textures if you need a clip map. So that's like your opacity map, is it on, is it not? And then you're gonna have your displacement um, and it will work. And if we go over here, we can see that that is all kind of doing what we wanted it to do. So I hope that makes sense. Shading layers are weird, but I like them. Um, give it a go and see if it makes sense to you. Uh, what, it, what it just really allows you to do is be better when you're collaborating with people. And generally speaking, they're gonna win uh, over materials being assigned manually. So what will happen, what you don't want to do really is get into a situation where one of you is using a material linker and the rest of you are using the shading layer because then it becomes quite difficult to figure out what's going on. Um, and don't forget, if you ever do sort of need to find out what material is doing what, you can go up here to the dropper and then middle click on the thing that you want to want to identify. And right here is going to take me to the green layer. All right, so you can always work backwards. You can be like, well, if it's green, it must be this shading layer that's assigning it. And that's where my problem is, if it is a problem. Um, okay, well, I don't want to chat too much about it, but I hope that makes sense. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. Um, subscribe, check out the webpage I'm trying to build. Um, yeah, anything that, anything that you need, just leave it in the comments below and I will try and get to it. All right, um, hope that helps and see you again soon. Bye.